Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 9th September 2017. I am Sagarnandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. However, if you are interested to know more about me, the company, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. From today, we we'll look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs using Q technical charts. Before going into broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may go through some of the community posts and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions along the way. I'll try to answer them. If not, surely before we end today. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live charts. Let's start with gold. We are looking at gold using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Last week we discussed that after this bullish shape candle, gold went above the upper boundary and since then it is remaining above the upper boundary. So we didn't have any low risk entry in this week to enter gold. Those who entered long time ago, maybe sometime here when it created a false downside breakout are able to reap the full benefit of catching gold at the very low price. At the right edge, gold continues to be overbought. So we are not going to take any long trade now following the philosophy of managing risk first. Let's look at oil. We are looking at oil using the same backdrop chart, left hand side, weekly interval, hop on chart, daily interval, right hand side. US oil created a false downside breakout as it tried to go below the watermark support level and reverse from there. However, there was no heavy activity, so we couldn't capitalize on this and we could not take any box long trade setup. Interestingly, US oil went to the memory resistance line which was there both in weekly and daily and precisely dropped from there. If somebody was keeping an eye on this, one could take very profitable short trade on US oil using fine tune real time chart. That will be using the Q system for day trading. There was no swing trading setup as we have seen many times that if we keep an eye on a stock or ETF when it is approaching a memory resistance line or support line, then as it reverses from there, we are able to take very profitable and low risk day trades. And if the trades work well and closes near the low of the day, as it happened on Friday, then partial profit of the Day trade could be booked and partial position could be held, making it a two day trade or maybe even a swing trade. Let me explain how this very profitable day trade could be taken and exactly on which day it could be taken. I will show that using fine tune chart. Let me ask you a question before I go to fine tune chart, just by looking at this daily chart the last couple of days, last four days, for example, which day you think we could take the day trade in the short direction just by looking at the daily chart. Of course, we have to 
decide in real life using real-time chart. Why I'm asking this is the more you observe these charts, you will start to know, even from the daily chart, which day the short opportunity was there. Or rather, which day it was not there. It is easy to filter it out. Would anybody like to try in the Q&A panel? Could we try to take it on this candle, this candle, or Friday's candle? We can anticipate from the daily candle how the 10-minute chart was. Let me explain that using the real-time chart. Now, firstly, we are not going to take any short trade on this day because it was not close to the memory resistance line. The possible days would be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We are looking at US oil using fine tune chart. I'm using 10 minute interval so I can see all the past four days on one screen. On Tuesday, as we saw from the daily chart, price was not close to memory resistance. That is why we were not looking for short trade on this day anyway. Let's look at Wednesday. On Wednesday, price went very close to the memory resistance line in daily chart. Now, if we look at fine tune chart, we see the early range high and early range low were formed soon after market open. And then price never went below early range low and closed below that. This one candle went below early range low, but it closed higher with a bullish shape candle. So there was no short signal using early range breakout mechanism. So we would not be able to take any short trade on this day, but we could keep an eye because high of this day was precisely at the daily memory resistance line. So next day we come back to USO again we keep an eye on that using fine tune template. And again, we see price moved in narrow range. It never went below early range low. It didn't go much above early range high also, but we were looking for only short trade, but there was no opportunity to take any short trade as it didn't go below early range low. So we are patient traders. On Friday, we see that price opened slightly below. Friday's open was at this blue line. Thursday's close was at this magenta line. Early range high and early range low were formed. And on this candle, price decisively closed below early range low. So we could take a short trade right at the close of this candle, put stop just above early range high or days high. So days high would be around this level, say around Thursday's close level. That will be our stop loss. Our risk amount will be this much. And when price came down, came to the pause line, we would already close partial profit. Then following our stop loss mechanism, we could either keep remaining position at initial stop loss if we close to third position, if we close half position, then we could move stop to break even stop. None of the stops were hit in this case. At the end of the day, price closed very close to day's low. So we will probably not close the remaining position. See if we can have more profit from it in the next week. We can see that by keeping the resistance memory in daily, in view, we could patiently look for short opportunities in fine tune. On Wednesday, we didn't find any. On Thursday, we didn't find any. But on Friday, we found it. It was very low risk entry. We could take it and make significant profit, probably hold partial position to try to let profit run in the next week. Let's now look at the broad market ETFs. In the last class, I had mentioned that sometimes DIA is going up, sometimes QQQ, sometimes SPY. Last week, QQQ was strongest. 
and I hypothesize that it may be that this week QQQ will fall down more. That happened to be true. Now, if we look at the SPY chart, we see the weekly backdrop color is still cyan and the shape of the candle is also bullish. In the daily chart, we see that after Tuesday's drop, though it was indecisive candle because it had solid body as well as lower tail, next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, hardly moved anywhere. Very narrow range days and two of the days were almost dojis, opening and closing at the exact same price. So SPY is not that bearish looking at the weekly chart and daily chart. Let's look at DIA. For DIA, we see that the weekly candle color has already turned magenta. It has a lower tail also. And more importantly, it is at support in daily chart. Support is there from multiple memory lines and also from the yellow direction line. So this is weaker than SPY, but having support. Now on this specific day, that is this week's candle, big drop, we could take very profitable short trade. In the last class, I had also mentioned that though markets went up, all the major ETFs were at resistance level, either memory, like was the case of Dow Jones Industrial Average, or watermark, like was in the case of QQQ and SPY. Now this week actually had four trading days. So this large magenta candle was the first trading day of the week. In last class, I had mentioned that based on the resistance levels, we could keep an eye on the ETFs and whichever starts to go below early range low first, meaning whichever is weaker than others, we could take a low risk short day trade. And I shared that trade as it happened in the community. Let me walk you through that trade. In the daily chart, DIA was already at memory resistance and there was a chance it will fall from there. And QQQ, SPY were also at resistance levels. So I was looking for a potential short day trade. If I am looking for day trade in an ETF, one of DIA, QQQ, SPY, I watch them side by side using fine tune chart. If I'm looking for the trade in the morning session, then I use five minute chart. Here for demonstration, I'm using 10 minute. So we have Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, NASDAQ ETF and S&P 500 ETF using fine tune real time chart 10 minute interval here. On the first trading day of this week, it's Tuesday, soon after market open, early range high and low were formed in all the ETFs, high and low. DIA couldn't go up after open. It very quickly fell below early range low and we could take a shot on this red candle. For QQQ, it tried to go up first and then fell down. Same was true for SPY. It tried to go up first, then fell down. So if you were watching these three ETFs side by side using fine tune chart, you could know clearly that on an intraday basis, DIA was weakest. And at the close of this candle, you could take a short day trade, stop loss just above early range high. So the risk amount was this much. And once price came to this pause level, much more than risk distance was covered. So one could book at least partial profit. Now in this case, we had to make a decision whether we would hold partial position or not. For that, we looked at the daily chart. We took a short trade on this day near the high of the candle. And we saw by the close of the day, 
price actually came to the memory support level, slightly bounced up from there. Because it came to memory support and bounced up from there, we would not like to carry forward any position of the day trade. And in this case, we'll close the entire position. So we could take this trade by watching the ETFs being at resistance level and choosing DIA because it broke below early range low before the others. This is one way to take high probability day trades. Identify the potential trade using daily chart and enter it using real time fine tune chart. Coming back to the at a glance template for the ETFs, we saw DIA is weaker than SPY, but at support level. Now let's look at QQQ. QQQ weekly backdrop also turned bearish, that is magenta. And if you look at the three ETFs, you will see QQQ actually dropped most. If you look at the weekly chart candles, you can identify that. That was our hypothesis anyway. If we look at the daily chart, we see that on Tuesday, that was the first trading day of the week, it dropped, but the candle was indecisive. The same pattern was there in SPY, a solid body, but with lower tail. Next two days were indecisive, opening and closing at almost same price. And on Friday, it dropped. There is no Q standard trade setup right now in any of these three ETFs. We may keep an eye and see if there is any trade coming up next week. Let's look at IWM also. IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, went up strongly after the bullish headwind was displayed and price was at the major support level, that is the white, very slow direction line. Then price displayed a bear release signal came to the value area. Here in the weekly chart, we see that it has a solid candle, but the backdrop color is still bullish. There is no standard trade setup in IWM as well. Because market is not having any direction, it is safer to take both long and short trades together, or maybe not take any trades. That is also an option. But if one is taking trades, it is safer to take some long. And for the long trades, we like to have fundamentally strong company in an industry that is outperforming others and is at a technical buy point. And we would like to balance that with a short trade, but the short trades characteristics will be different. It will be a fundamentally weak stock in an industry that is underperforming and at optimal short point. Because we are aligning edges to both the trades, whatever direction the market goes, we may have both profitable or we may have one profitable and one losing trade, but still the profit should be bigger than the loss because we are aligning more and more edges with both the trades. Let us now look at the broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. You will find a lot of useful insight from there as usual. Every week we look at NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side along with three pairs of internal studies, new high lows, advanced declines and up down volumes. If we look at the indices, we can see here also NASDAQ is weaker than NYSE, just like QQQ was weaker than SPY. Here we see a support memory forming in NYSE composite index. Over longer term, both NASDAQ and NYSE are in uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. 
it will take some time before they turn into lower highs, lower lows. The internals continue to be weak, not able to surpass previous highs. If we look at the internals for this week, we see all six of them declined this week. And three of them ended negative and three of them ended positive. So in summary, we can conclude that in the longer term weekly chart, broad market internal studies show that the indices are still bullish, the internals are weak. For this specific week, internals are bearish. Every week we look at sector performance over three periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the yellow bar. Together, they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. We see this week five sectors declined, six sectors went up. This shows a neutral state of the market. We saw that from the ETFs also, there was no directional trade signal in any of the ETFs. However, when we look more closely, we can see declining sectors went down by bigger percentages than the up move of the gaining sectors. So maybe the market is balanced, but slightly bearish than bullish. Energy actually went up for two successive weeks. We saw that US oil dropped precisely from memory resistance, keeping an eye on that resulted in very profitable short day trade in US oil. We already looked into that. Of all the sectors, real estate is the only sector that is now up for all the three review periods. So this sector is strong now. Whereas telecom declined and it is the biggest decliner of the week. It is also down for all the three review periods through the entire month, rolling month. Financials is the only other sector other than telecom that is also down for all the three review periods. The sector analysis gives us a higher level view somewhere in between broad market and industry analysis. When we go into industry analysis, we can identify trades which are having many forces aligned with them at market level, industry level, and fundamental level, and technical level. And we will look at many such trades today also. We are looking at the five days best performing industries, home improvement furnishing related industries were best ranked improvers in the previous week. We discussed it in last week's market roundup and we keep on seeing when industries are best ranked improver in the subsequent weeks, they turn out to be one of the best performers. That happened and because we were already watchful about stocks in these industries, we could catch some very profitable trades in Home Depot and Lowe's. Both gave profitable go with flow long trades. Lows also bounced up from memory support. Fundamentally, Home Depot has better growth than low. So let us look at Home Depot and low, starting from Q edge, drilling down, and then looking them up in Q vital, and finally analyzing them using Q technical charts. Every time we open QH industry analyst, it analyzes 255 industries across 12 monthly periods and then more frequently for the recent periods, 10 days, five days, two days, and one day. For swing trading, mostly we look at the five days period, which is shown in bold case. And sometimes to pinpoint the exact turning point, 
one may keep an eye on one day period or two days period. We can click this button to copy the data into industry work area and do our slicing, dicing, sorting there. If we look for home improvement retail companies, home improvement retailers, we see that this industry is having best rank possible, rank one. If we were keeping an eye on these industries based on last week's anticipation, because some of them were best rank improvers, we could see this week it was gaining strength further. We could drill down by clicking this button and we find two stocks, Home Depot and Lowe's. So let me directly go to QVital and do a peer analysis on Home Depot. We see that Home Depot has the best growth among the stocks in this peer list. That is shown by the green color. So we can identify a stock's fundamental strength either from the growth, it should be higher growth than peers or it should be optimal valued company. In case of Home Depot, we can consider it as a fundamentally strong company because it had high growth. So we could look for a long opportunity in Home Depot as the industry was improving rank. We are looking at Home Depot using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, daily hop on template on the right hand side. We could keep an eye on the stock as the industry was starting to improve. And on this day, it gave us a go with flow long trade setup. It was a low risk entry, stock loss would be just below recent low and we could book profit at the upper boundary. This week it closed strongly higher both in daily and weekly charts and the industry is having the best possible rank. So one might book partial profit but there is no reason to book full profit. One may use trailing stop to protect the remaining position from now. We saw fundamentally low was weaker than Home Depot, at least in terms of growth. But it also gave us profitable entry on Q technical charts. In case of low, we see after earnings, it created a very indecisive candle in the weekly chart with both upper tail and lower tail. However, same week, tried to go below the memory support and closed above that, creating a false downside breakout accompanied by very high activity. While this was happening around earning time, it also displayed a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart. And daily was also near memory support level. So when price came to this day, it gave us a go with flow long opportunity, which was preceded by support from memory in both weekly and daily, and also a bullish headwind signal. So now if we look at both these stocks, Home Depot and Low, we can see that if we combine industry strength, both are in same industry, so both were giving long signal in terms of industry. If we look at fundamentals, Home Depot had slightly better fundamentals. The growth is better. Price may be slightly overvalued as we saw from QMeter. Now on technical charts, we see that lows had better signals. Looking at both weekly, daily, the false breakout, etc. So on balance, if we combined industry fundamental and technical studies, we could conclude that both low and HD Home Depot were equally attractive opportunities for taking a long trend. So one could enter both or enter either one of them. Both of them ended being very profitable trades. Again, a trade where we could 
use the insight of rank improving industries and take the trade proactively. Also in last week's market roundup, we saw that construction material related industries were strong. The strength continued this week and this stock AMWD gave a profitable bounce long trade. This stock has strong growth as seen from QVITA. Here the industry was strong from last week itself. We can look it up in QH and probably we can drill down to the stock and check its fundamentals and then we will look at technical charts. Bounds trade setups don't come often but when they come they have very high success rate like the other standard trade setups in Q trading system. So this was a very effective bounce long trade setup. So let's start drilling down from the Q edge. We we'll look at construction, supplies and fixtures. We are filtering Q edge industries on construction and we see construction, supplies and fixtures. This was weaker in previous months shown by the magenta color. Over 10 days it improved rank significantly from 104 to 15. And last week's analysis we could already identify this and other related industries to be stronger that is outperforming others. Over five days period its rank improved further. So we could keep an eye on the industry and its stocks. If we drill down, we get a list of stocks. We would look for potential long in the fundamentally strongest of these stocks. So we can find that out from Q Vital scorecard. And I saw AMWD is a stock which is not having optimal valuation. Valuation is in the middle shown by yellow color, but has one of the best growths in this peer list. For fundamentally strong stocks, we are either going to look for better growth or better valuation. Either of them are okay. So I found AMWD from this list then we could keep an eye on this stock using technical charts. We are looking at AMWD using backdrop template on the left hand side with interval and daily hop on chart on the right hand side. We see that after earnings it dropped heavily. And where did it go to? It went to precisely the memory support line and went up from there. The memory support was in the weekly chart also. The drop was accompanied by extreme high activity. So the first day that we had price closing above previous days close, that is on this red bar, we had a bounce long trade setup. Bounce trade setup is the only Q trade setup which allows us to take a long position in a candle with traffic light red color. Yellow color is also fine, green is also fine, but red is also fine. This is the only setup that allows us to take long with red traffic light color. So that came true on this day. Our stop loss was very narrow, just below the memory support line. And since then price went up heavily. So this was a very good example of bounce trade setup. These trade setups don't come often. Most of our trades come in go with flow category, fewer in headwind and box category, and even less in bounce category. This was a very profitable bounce long trade setup. Again, we could utilize information about the company's fundamentals and industry strength to identify this trend. Very high probability trade again. 
in the oil and gas drilling industry we see that hp and esv has optimal relative valuation and also they have short squeeze potential q chart show bullish headwind in both of them there is no trade setup right now but one may keep an eye on them i'll not go to q edge or q vital for these two stocks let me quickly look them up in q technical charts hp dropped heavily as we can see from the weekly backdrop chart and again it came to the memory support level displayed a bullish headwind also in the weekly chart and since then in fact for four weeks that is one month moving sideways interestingly we have two bullish headwinds in the daily chart as well we had a false downside breakout price tried to go below this watermark support level but went back up if there was very high activity on this candle then we would have very low risk box long trade setup in a stock that is fundamentally strong and in an industry that is gaining strength and we would have additional support from the bullish headwind signals in weekly as well as daily however we didn't have the very high activity so we are not going to think that we could have profited from there could have profited doesn't help us we didn't have any signal so we wouldn't enter that at the right edge we see that this stock has already created higher high so if it comes down little bit and goes up and creates a higher low gives us a cyan color candle there we might have a very low risk go with flow long opportunity in a stock that is fundamentally strong and industry is showing some strength as well esp is also showing some strength on technical charts you may look it up i will not go through esp now forest and wood products this industry went up for two successive weeks as one of the best performers bcc dot n bcc had optimal valuation it gave a go with flow long trade in q charts the trade could be identified using q sonar or top down approach using q edge again i will not go through q vital or q edge now to save time but look it up on q charts bcc is in construction industry wood and forest products also its backdrop color was cyan from one week earlier itself so in daily chart when price came to value area and tilted up gave us a cyan color candle we had a go with flow long trade setup if somebody entered the trade at the close of the day probably the reward potential would be smaller than risk so it could be identified on an intraday basis using q sonar and somebody could enter it on the lower side of this candle using fine tune real time chart and that would give acceptable reward risk ratio partial position could be booked within one day as price hit upper boundary the very next day the weekly chart continues to be strong the industry continues to be strong so partial position could be held as i explained my preference is to book two third of the position and hold one third with initial stop loss for a while until it makes a new swing low and goes higher from that point onwards i can start using trailing stop this was another profitable trade that we could take using the 360 degrees analysis 
specialty retailers is showing some strength this week. Retailers were lagging for a long time and sometimes it was trying to go up and fall down again. So one may be careful before taking much long position in these stocks. However, several stocks may be worth keeping an eye on. They are all having reliable earnings. All are having optimal valuation and showing signs of stabilization in Q charts. Let's look at Q edge, drill down from there, look at Q vital, and finally look at Q charts for some of them. We'll start with Q edge and look at specialty retailers. This color code is extremely useful. Instantly we can see specialty retailers were weak for many months and in recent period it is gaining strength. Our primary time frame for deciding trade entry is the five days period and over that period it is one of the strongest rank five but we can just look at the cyan color. We can drill down to the stocks, we can click this button or control shift S, the hotkeys. It has found many stocks, we can copy all of them, drop them in Q vital, calculate the fundamental scorecard, go to scorecard and let me use the filter by color option in Excel. So I am filtering by color blue value on earnings quality. Then I am filtering by color blue value for relative valuation and again filtering by color blue value for internal valuation. That gives me a large number of stocks whose earning quality is very high. Earnings may be up or down from quarter to quarter, but the earnings results are authentic. They have very high relative valuation, meaning optimally valued relative to other stocks in the industry and internal value calculated using dividend, earnings projection, etc., are also very strong. On top of that, many of them have short squeeze potential. So let me use color by filter on that also. So now we have 12 stocks which have great fundamentals in terms of earnings quality, relative valuation, internal valuation, as well as potential for short squeeze. And we could look up some of them in the chart. They are showing signs of strength. At least signs of stability. Let's look at some of these and you will see the first few that I listed may be less ready than the later few. So let me look at first two and then maybe BBBY, LB and PIR and BBBY. LB has strong brand, however it dropped heavily, tried to go up then dropped again. Now it has displayed a bullish headwind signal. The weekly candle color is still neutral. In the daily chart, we see that it is very gradually going up. There is an uptrending memory support line. So we would like to have a higher high and higher low before taking a long position in LB because it has declined heavily. Or if there is a low risk box short trade setup, we may take that also. But right now there is no trade setup. PIR and the specialty retailer, which dropped a lot, came close to the watermark support in weekly. Didn't touch that. Displayed a bullish headwind signal. Here, the weekly backdrop color has already changed to cyan. Just like LB, it is very gradually starting to go up. Now, if PIR drops a little bit and then tilts up again, 
it will give us higher high and higher low and a low risk entry opportunity using go with flow long trade setup there is no trade setup right now bbby bed bath and beyond also dropped heavily displayed bullish headwind signal the backdrop candle color is bullish for three weeks now in daily chart it is gradually going up just like the other two stocks lb and pir and here we have a false downside breakout price tried to go below the watermark support level and closed above it created a kind of higher high already so if next week somebody sees that the industry is starting to strengthen and this stock is going up then one may take a very low risk entry long up position in this stock this chart looks best among the three stocks that we saw in this industry there are other stocks in this industry which are fundamentally strong and at optimal value so you may keep an eye on them as well let's look at five days worst performing industries in earlier market roundup we had identified this stock lbrda as a fundamentally weak stock at pendulum high in q charts in cable and satellite cable and satellite industry is at very high level for a long time there is no trade opportunity yet, but you may keep an eye on this. Telecom sector was weak. We saw telecom was the worst performing sector this week. And this weakness is reflected in multiple industries, wireless telecom, diversified telecom, telecom services. So again, we could use QH and see industries declining, drill down, into wireless telecom services industry identify this stock gsat which was very overvalued we could see that from q vital and then using q charts we could take very profitable short signals that was true for gsat and also true for atni and cbb in telecom services industry Let's first go to GSAT drilling down from wireless telecom services industry. In QA, we will filter for telecom. Wireless telecom services industry was weak throughout, so we could look for potential short. If we drill down, we find a number of companies. We can drop them in Q Vital calculate the fundamental scorecard so we get the stocks fundamental scorecard instantly we can see gset was one of the weakest we would find very profitable trade in gset it was already going down there was a magenta candle color on this day and again this week we could take go with flow short trade in both of them and both would hit profit target lower boundary or the white direction line in few days as the industry is weak the weekly drop sharply daily also drop sharply with extreme high activity there is no reason to book full profit partial position may be held i'll not drill down for atni and cbb but let's look at these charts atni and cbb ATNI was already weak for some time. The industry was weak also for some time. So it is expected the stocks will be down for a while. On this day, we had a false upside breakout from this watermark level and price came to the yellow direction line and dropped from there heavily with extreme high activity the close of the day was beyond value area so you don't probably take a short trade at the end of the day if we were watching the stock using q sonar intraday then we could take a short trade somewhere in the middle or upper half of the candle 
that will give us acceptable reward risk ratio and in two days we'll book profit. You may look up the other telecom stock that also gave very profitable short opportunity. We could again identify them from the industry's weakness, from the fundamental weakness and then the technical weakness on the charts. Two houseware related industries dropped this week. However, they are weak for many months. Let's look at them on Q edge. So we can see that houseware specialty is weak for a long time. It's not that we cannot find good short opportunities there. We can find provided the technical charts also give us optimal short point. We just saw that telecom was also weak for a long time, but we had optimal short point on technical charts. I went through the houseware and specialty stocks, but I didn't find any stock that is giving a technical signal. Rather, some of them are showing some possible sign of reversal, like I think Whirlpool, WHR. Let's look at the chart. Whirlpool dropped and came to the support watermark level in weekly. For two weeks, it has ended with bullish shape candle. The backdrop candle color is still yellow. That is expected because the drop was pretty rapid. It has displayed a bull release signal one week ago. This week it tried to go down but closed near the high. We can see that from the daily chart it tries to go down but on Friday closed sharply higher. Friday also gave us a cyan color candle, bullish shape candle. So it has given us higher low. There is a memory resistance line nearby, so we are not going to take any long trade now. So now if it gives us a proper buy signal and if the industry starts to turn around, then we may look for a long term or a swing trade buy opportunity. I think the fundamentals of this stock is quite good. Let me look it up again. While pull, we see that it has the best possible relative valuation score and internal value score is also very high. Earnings is not very reliable, so this may not be the best opportunity for long-term holding because for long-term holding, we have to hold it probably across multiple quarterly results. If the earnings is not reliable, it becomes difficult to hold it across quarterly results. But relative value, internal value, very nice, optimally valued chart is showing some strength. The industry is still very weak. So I'll not take a long position unless the industry starts to turn towards cyan. If that happens, this may be a good long opportunity. Every week we look at the biggest rank improvers because they may give us early signal of which industries are going to perform best. Several utilities related industries went up. However, utilities are strong for many months and the stocks may not be at optimal price point anymore. Instead, one might look for short opportunity. However, we short it only when the industry starts to show some sign of weakness and the fundamental of the stock should also be weak. So in I.N, I identified by top-down analysis, drilling down from multi-line utilities, fundamentals are weak for this stock. So if the industry starts to weaken, then we will look for short. Remember this week actually it gained in rank. So it is not the time to short. At the same time, as I mentioned, they are already at very high price level. So we are not going to buy either may keep an eye on stocks like NI. Multiple food related industries also improved, packaged food, food products, food processing. All these were underperforming for many months. So if they start to go up, then we may have good buy opportunity in stocks which are fundamentally strong. TSN, Tyson Foods is one of them. It has high growth as well as optimal value. Let's look at this stock. 
we see that the food related industries were weak for many months. Many of them were weak for many months. And over five days period, many of them, not the food retailers, but all the other food related industries are showing signs of turning around. So we could try to drill down. We find many stocks. We can drop them in Q vital. Calculate the fundamental scores. I think Tyson Food is here. Tyson Food TSN has very good relative value as well as internal value. And growth is also not bad. So we could look at Tyson Foods on technical charts. We see that weekly has a backdrop candle color that is bullish. It is very close to memory resistance in weekly. So we may not enter long right now. There are two possibilities. If price goes above the memory resistance, come back and tilts up, we'll have a good long opportunity. Of course, we'll observe that in more detail with more precision on the daily charts. The other possibility is price comes back to the memory support in the daily chart and tilts back up from there. If that happens, it will give us a very low risk entry opportunity. Probably a go with flow long opportunity. And by looking at the different direction lines, maybe three or even four direction lines will come together and price will close above all of them. That will give very low risk entry opportunity. Especially if the industry continues to strengthen, we'll align all the forces with this potential trend. There may be other stocks in some of these industries that are at optimal valuation. So you may keep an eye on the industry because the industry has biggest rank improvement this week. It's worth keeping an eye on the industries as well as stocks. Industries with biggest rank decliners. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that semiconductors underperformed in rank. But I went through the technical charts and I mentioned that none of them were optimal short point. After that, semiconductors went up. The charts were at some kind of support after decline, they went up. But this week, multiple semiconductor industries are among biggest rank decliners. Some of the stocks are at very high level, pendulum high, and fundamentally not so strong anymore. So we could see that by drilling down from semiconductor and semiconductor equipment industry, and then looking up the stocks fundamentals in QVital, let me do that now. We instantly see from QA that the semiconductor industries were very strong earlier. 10 day period, they declined in rank. Over five days, they declined heavily. So this is a time to start looking for short opportunities. If we drill down, we have many stocks in this industry. Drop them in QVital, calculate the scorecard. And you may filter by color with magenta this time. Look for short opportunity. And NVIDIA is one of them. Very poor relative value and internal value. Growth is okay. Growth is actually good relative to the peers. So for fundamental weakness, we look for either overvaluation or weak growth. We usually don't expect both. So NVIDIA is overvalued. So Fundamentally, in that way, we can say it is weaker and we can start looking for short opportunity. It has interesting chart this week. Let's look it up. If we look at the weekly charts, we see for many weeks, it couldn't go above the high created by this candle with very long upper tail. It tried to go up, created a bearish headwind, closed below that watermark resistance level, dropped heavily on this week, gradually tried to go up, barely closed above it, and this week dropped again with a bearish headwind signal uniquely. In daily, we can see it is meandering around, not able to close. 
decisively above the watermark resistance level. On Friday, it dropped. It has a magenta flow color candle. Relative performance is tilting down. There are several bearish signs. However, there is a memory support line. If the memory support line was not there, I could have taken a short position at Friday's close. But it was there, so we couldn't take it. One may keep an eye on this stock next week. If the industry continues to weaken and the stock goes down in real time fine tune chart, one may find very low risk entry opportunity. There are many in semiconductors that are at pendulum high. This is one of them. If we change to pendulum template, we can see it is at pendulum high. It is inside triangle pattern now. Maybe the retail traders are all stopped out. Those who entered short over this earnings day. Now, if it drops, we may have good short opportunity. Now, there are many stocks in this industry. Not many of them have narrow spread options. Why I was more interested in NVIDIA is because it has narrow spread options. It may give high profit because we will benefit not only from the stocks down move, but also from the option pricing or implied volatility going higher. If we switch to the option template, then we can see the candle color is magenta. That shows that the option price is still very low or implied volatility is still very low. We can see that from this line also. So if the stock goes down, this line will tilt up. The candle color will turn cyan and will benefit from the put option increasing in price because of delta as well as because of volatility increase. We can see just before earnings volatility was very high. That's why it's not suggested in superior profit way to take a long put or long call position just before earnings. Even if the stock moves in our direction, for example, if we bought put option just before earnings, even if the stock dropped, we will have less profit because there was a huge drop in volatility. So option price will reduce. Though we'll profit from delta increase, we'll lose heavily because of volatility drop. That's why we don't try to take a long position in options put or call when the option pricing color as shown on this template is green or cyan. It is optimal when the option pricing template shows the candles in magenta or red as is right now. That is why I demonstrated NVDA. However, for stock short opportunity, there may be many other semiconductors which are at very high level and fundamentally weak, either in terms of valuation or in terms of growth. So we went through top-down analysis of many industries, either strong industries, we are looking for long position or weak industries, we are looking for short position. Let's spend a few minutes on key wage. I sorted the industries over five days period, showing the best performers at the top we can see several home improvement, home furnishing industries are strong and they were weak earlier. So these industries may give us optimal long opportunity. Oil and gas drilling was one of them. However, we see over two days and one day period, oil and gas drilling declined in rank heavily. So it is not optimal to look for long position. That is the use of the one day, two day period our primary decision making is based on five days period. But if we see rank again declined very fast, as we can see immediately from the color coding, it's not an optimal industry to take long. Whereas home improvement retailer, home furnishing retailers, they were magenta for a long time, turned cyan and holding on. Insurance brokers is holding on, but it is already strong for a long time. So optimal low price for entering long trade might have already passed. You may look for swing trades still. That is how we use the heat map color coding to identify optimal 
industries to look for long opportunity. If I sort it in the reverse order, then immediately aluminium catches the eye. It was strong for a long time, now heavily turned magenta. So you could look for long term short opportunities or swing short opportunities in this industry. Whereas these industries were already weak for a long time. Reinsurance, houseware, specialties, appliance tools, houseware. So you may not find optimal short opportunities there. In fact, as I mentioned, companies like Whirlpool may be stabilizing and if the industry, say appliance tools, houseware, starts to strengthen, it may give us optimal buy opportunity. Not yet, but we can keep an eye. That's how we can start anticipating and keep an eye on the industries. Computer hardware is another one which was strong for a long time, now showing weakness. So this may give us stocks at optimal short point. Maybe longer term, but at least for swing trade. That is all I plan to share in today's session. Thanks for joining. Always great to have you all in these sessions. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.